Hello and welcome to the stock specific class here for Thursday, February the 17th. As I uh, mentioned last week, I'm, I'm doing the recordings of the classes this week instead of the live classes. I'm on kind of a working vacation. Um, I will be back to the normal schedule next week, so just be aware of that. Uh, today's class will be a little, pretty brief just because there's not a whole lot to, to, uh, to really um, uh, change from what I talked about in the market update. I will have some specific stocks that I will go over, although keep in mind um, the market conditions as I as I talk about them today, that we are kind of in a no man's land here, so we definitely would want to wait for confirmation for any of these uh, uh, potential patterns. Um, I still think uh, the stronger probability is that we'll retest the January lows before we go much higher, and um, and so I it it would definitely be profitable to be patient right here and, and not to not get too aggressive. Um, going over the direction alerts. Uh, you know, still kind of in the middle on the momentum indicator. We finally got our our breadth indicator back, uh, but it's right in the middle as well, which I had indicated it was it was uh, likely right in the, the same spot as the momentum. Sentiment is still relatively high, near extreme. Again, not much has really changed in those uh, over the last uh, week or so as we've kind of moved uh, back and forth. Um, buy sell ratios, we're seeing the the buys start to cross back over the sells again, um, but you can notice the whipsaw conditions here, kind of back and forth, um, and that might continue um, uh, possibly in this area that we're at, which I'll point out when we look at the chart. Uh, sentiment still kind of right in the middle there, so no no extreme there. As far as the uh, the chart, the market uh, activity, I'm doing this update right in the beginning of the market day on Thursday. So, um, you know, these candles could change quite a bit by the time you view the the recording, um, but it, uh, not enough to where it would change uh, kind of my outlook. Uh, what I talked about on on uh, Tuesday is the same. We're really focusing it on that uh, January 10th low as being the critical spot to get above, to be more bullish in the market. Um, we again hit it uh, that Wednesday a couple weeks ago and then moved back from it. We hit it again last Wednesday, moved back from it. This Wednesday, last Wednesday, we didn't even get close to it. But I, I believe we need to get back above there, close above there to, to really be more bullish on the market and be more more uh, aggressive in buying. There's, there's still too much, um, the fact that we tested there and, and pulled away, uh, too much um, selling taking place right there, and, and the selling is telling me that the market kind of wants to retest these lows down here, these January lows. Um, now, we started the slide last last Friday. Monday, we started to move lower as well, but then reversed, and then obviously the last couple of days, we've been kind of up a little bit, but today, it looks like maybe we're resuming that, that downward uh, move. Uh, again, the market is really really concerned about the the Russia Ukraine situation that's what caused it to sell off on Friday so that's a little bit of a clue that the market is concerned about that the fact it sold off and then it rallied a little bit on the news on on Tuesday that that there were possible troop um, withdrawals from the front line uh, but that was that turned out to either not be the case or we don't know in fact there was a story out last night that even uh, that 7000 more troops were were brought in to the the front lines. So again, a lot of uncertainty there. And that could be a little bit of the reason why the market's down again today is, is with that news. There's other things that the market's digesting as well. We are getting towards the end of earnings season. So there's there's uh, less of a drive for earnings to to push the market higher. Um, and and so it, it can be it can start to focus, take its focus off individual stocks and onto, you know, um, world events or, you know, the Fed, or it, it can start to focus on other things to, to trade off. And remember, traders are always trying to have a reason for doing things, a reason to buy, a reason to sell. It doesn't have to be rational. It just has to be a reason. If you think about it logically, it makes sense, especially with these fund managers. You know, if they're going to go in and buy a whole bunch of stuff, their their bosses are going to know why they're they're taking on that risk, why they're buying, they want an explanation. And, and, uh, and, and so, you know, they'll say, well, I'm buying because of uh, AMD's earnings or whatever. 
whatever reason they're buying. Same with selling, uh, especially with selling. If they're selling and getting out of things, and especially if they're taking losses, uh, their bosses really want to know what's going on, and they've got to have a reason for it. And, and, and so that's why a lot of times you'll hear me say that the market is looking, the charts are looking bearish, but we might be waiting for a trigger, something to be that reason for the selling and, um, and give them a reason to sell. And sometimes uh, it can be the, the smallest thing that comes out and you would think, well, why would the market react to that? Uh, it, it's so minor, but it becomes that the market is already in that, re, that condition to sell based on the chart. And then it just needs that reason to sell. And it could be anything. It'd be something really stupid, but um, it, it allows those fund managers to have that excuse to, to pull the trigger and sell. So, um, you know, that could be the, what we're seeing right now is is the Russia Ukraine thing as being that reason to sell and and anytime that negative news comes up um, we see the market react. Uh, now again, I, I don't expect an invasion until after the Olympics are over, which are this weekend. Uh, but I, I, I it, it would probably happen very soon after that, uh, especially with all the 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 momentum building up this week and and uh, the alerts that are going on this week. People, you know. Uh, embassies closing and things like that um, it looks like it's it's pretty imminent and hopefully that works out for the oil trades that we're in um, in the portfolio again i you know I, I i hate to be in trades that seem to profit from bad things or negative things um, but you know my my opinion has always been you know it, it's not that i want bad things to happen it's that hey if 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 these bad things are going to happen and, and there's obvious um, uh, trades you can make to, to uh, take advantage of it. I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, now what I would have a problem with is if, is if you have a big uh, bearish position and then you're encouraging, you're using your influence to encourage bad things to happen. Uh, you know, if I were to be trying to contact uh, Russia, I'm not big enough to do this, but if I, you know, had some sort of ties to to try to get them to encourage them to invade, uh, so that my stocks would go up, that's that I have a big problem with. But um, as small smaller traders, if you're seeing uh, things that are, are out of your control, they're likely to happen despite what what uh, what you could do. I don't have a problem with um, taking advantage of that, um, especially if you could end up doing something good with the, the money you make off of something like that. So anyway, um, SBY, that's again, the key, we're, you can see how we're kind of stuck in the middle. You've got the, that January 10th low, those highs from, from earlier in February, and then you have these January lows. And again, we're stuck in the middle right here. So um, a move closer to these lows. Now it could be that we just retest them and bounce off of them, or we could go lower than them. Um, as I mentioned back here, we just didn't give them enough fear, I, I felt, to really create a bottom right there. Uh, the VIX spiked, but it spiked really in one day. We had a, a kind of a one-day reversal um, or a very short-term reversal off of that. And um, uh, that always concerned me, and it, it seems to be coming back right now as a, as a good reason to be a big concern. Um, so again, just keep that in mind that we're in kind of this no man's land. Uh, the other indexes are pretty much the same. Um, I'll point out the, the Russell 2000 IWM right here. Uh, this is kind of rallied up to, let me take a longer term chart right here. This is kind of rallied up to that, that lower. You remember this is the sideways range it had been in for over a year. We broke through it, and now we've rallied back up to it right here. We can't break above that. We're looking to roll over again. Again, if, if the Russell 2000 can get above this area and, and continue to move up, you see the SP move above those those that January 10th high. That would cause me to be a lot more bullish in the market, want, where an area where I'd want to be more aggressive at that point. Um, all right, so those are the conditions. Um, Again, I'll go over some stocks here, but just keep in mind that we'd want to wait for confirmation on this. Um, uh, can't emphasize that enough because uh, I, I wouldn't want you to load up and, and uh, be hard. But the, the idea of this class is to give you, or the purpose of this class is to give you some ideas of things you can consider. Um, 
as you'll notice, as we add a lot of stocks to the, the watch list, I don't get into every stock that I put in the watch list, but I watch it. I want to, I want to keep an eye on it. If there's good patterns out there, I want to wait. And I, so when there is an opportunity, and that could happen very quickly, over a day or two, we could get really good conditions. And you want to be able to have a, a list of stocks that you've been, you've been preparing for that situation where, that you can jump into. So, um, you know, the, the, you know, the, it's not like we're wasting time putting these stocks in this watch list. Um, that watch list can, can, could become very valuable if, if things really turn around and we do want to get very aggressive. We know exactly what, where to go and, and what to start to get into. I know the transportation stocks right here. This is one I've already gone over before, but uh, pointed out again, this FLNG uh, 98 strength rank. Um, again, I like the, I like this larger, looks like a larger ABC pullback right here, this, this larger trend. And then I like this initial move up. It was consolidating through here. And then yesterday it looked like it's starting to break out. Now it's back a little bit today, right in, right along with that breakout area right there. Uh, so we'll see if that holds and it can continue to move higher. We're waiting for this to go back to a buy signal anyway, but um, that's looking like it has some some upside potential there. And it's, again, this is one that we pointed out before. Another one that we we've kept an eye before on in the oil sector, and there's a lot of stocks in the oil sector that uh, that look good. Um, and again, if if I, I still believe that this is one of the kind of the no brain areas you want to be in uh, if there if there is a Russian Ukraine attack, uh, at least with that initial spike, there should be a big spike initial spike in oil. It may it may uh, not last long, and maybe because one thing that that uh, could happen is that if if the oil spikes up, the American uh, oil companies could start drilling and start increasing production to make up for it, and that could uh, ease oil prices. But initially, we would expect that those those prices should spike up, and that's what we were trying to trade off of that. But Continental Resources (CLR) 98 strength rank. Had a big, all the oil stocks on um, Tuesday gap down, but then they closed higher than where they opened. So they had a kind of a bullish reversal. Um, yesterday and, and today have been a little bit flat, but I, you know, we saw something similar back here. We'll see if that, that continues. This continues to give you a higher low right here and continues to move up. Uh, we're sitting right at, breakout area right here so again you could wait for confirmation on these as well to see if, if they uh if they can move it can move back above that breakout area then this is a, a good one here under the finance sector if we can pull some of that sometimes it takes a little bit of time to load some of these And some of it might have to do with my, I'm using my laptop here on, on vacation, so I might have a little bit of, uh, as you can see, let me go back to the sectors here. You can see that, you know, some of these, there's seven, there, look how many stocks there are in the finance sector, in the oil sector. Um, you know, it could take a little bit of time to load. So let's try uh, construction. There's one I had in construction. And we'll come back to <clears throat> the finance. I like uh, Louisiana Pacific, 92 strength rank, but you'll notice there's not a lot of stocks in the in the high 90s here. This is the highest one here. The LPX is a ticker symbol. And what I'm seeing here is, again, a nice steady uptrend. Uh, and then we had this big sell-off down here. And then we had this initial rally, and then it's consolidated. So either this is, again, this is wave A. This is and and this rallies up a little bit, and that's wave B, and then you get wave C coming down, or this is the bottom, and this is you know wave one, wave two, and you're gonna get wave three, wave four, wave five. So I like these trade situations. There's there's usually a pretty high probability you get some sort of upward move off of this pattern. Uh, maybe it's brief, but there's usually a pretty high probability you get an upward move off of that and with the deeper pullback right here. Um, there's there's a little bit less of it of of the downside risk, uh, but again, remember market conditions, uh, and you you, probably, you could wait for 
definitely wait for a buy signal as confirmation to get into this one. Uh, let's check those Binance stocks here because I had about three of those I wanted to go over. <clears throat> and if not, we can come back again to it in a second. Like I said, it, can, it might just take a little bit of time to load up these. Uh, let's try, you know, let's come back again. Let's try, well, computer and technology might present the same problem. If it does, I have the individual stocks written down. I can just pull those up. <clears throat> yeah, this might be the same problem here. Usually I'm pulling these up before I do the update, so um, they've already loaded them in. But and like I said, usually I only have this problem on my laptop for some reason. All right, let's try finance stocks again. This should, they should pull up now, I would hope. Well, these should take a long time. There we go. All right, so one is MBI right here, 98 strength rank. And again, you got this V-shaped move right here. So you had a pullback, you've had an impulsive move up. This looks more corrective, more sideways. Now again, it could dip down a little bit further. There's always that possibility, but when you see this type of behavior, you have impulsive and then this looks corrected, it should have another impulsive move once this corrected move is done. And again, waiting for that it, to go back to that buy signal could be that additional confirmation. But this is one you might want to, in fact, let's go ahead and add this one to the watch list. Those other stocks we already had in the watch list, I believe. So uh, we're going to add this to the stock specific class. Let's save that. And then another one under finance here, this uh, MCB, Metropolitan Bank Holdings, 97 strength rank. And again, just, you know, we've, we've have higher highs, higher lows. Oops. Had a little bit of a lower high right here, but what you're hoping for is that this can find some support, start to move up. And that's why we're waiting for confirmation on this. But if it can, it can give that higher low. Um, but this would definitely need some confirmation. Um, and it, and it, you probably want to get back above this as well because it's a little bit of a lower high right there. But that, uh, I'm having trouble drawing these lines. That could be temporary. So if it could, if it can rally back up, get above that, go to a higher high and give you a higher low. That could be a good entry or a good confirmation of that. And then one more in the finance sector here is this uh, Blackstone BX 95 strength rank. And again, you have this, this deep pullback right here and definitely an impulsive move up. Uh, right through here, and then this looks like maybe wave A, wave B, wave C. You're at about a 50% retracement of that move up, which is something I'll look at, and you're starting to move higher here. Now, yesterday was an update, but today's a little bit flat. Definitely want to wait for confirmation on that. Um, you could also look at a possible inverse head and shoulders pattern developing right here. There's your neckline. So there's 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 a very bullish there's a couple different bullish things going on in this that that, that look good um, but again you'd want to wait for a little bit of confirmation on that 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 could be one that uh, that you could consider with that confirmation and let's see if computer and technology is pulled up here um, there's only one that we're going to look at here which is Nvidia 95 strength rank. Um, down a little bit today. It was up up nicely yesterday. 
but again, keep in mind the context of, of possibly retesting those those uh, those uh, January lows. Uh, why is charge taking a little bit of time to pull up? Why is that? Here we go. Yeah, it was it's it was actually it was up on uh, Tuesday pretty nicely down a little bit today. Um, you know, th I've been looking at this as a possible deeper deep ABC pattern, but if the market's going to retest those lows, chip stocks are going to go lower as well. They're 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 part of what drives the market, and so it's it'd be hard for me to believe that. Uh, oh, I lost the chart here. What happened? <clears throat> it's hard for me to believe that they that uh, and and that they would rally with the market going lower. This could be a corrective move. You know, this could be more chop, considered more choppy, heading for another move down. But again, that's why we're waiting for confirmation. If this does move lower, that'll just give us a better entry point. We're not in right now. Um, so that's one of the stocks under computer and technology. And lastly, industrial products. Like this uh, VTNR 97 strength rank, Veritex. And again, you would have kind of this V shaped move and then, you know, kind of, kind of pull back a little bit, looking to break out. Not quite an inverse head and shoulders pattern. You don't have much of a, a left shoulder over here. But again, I like the impulsive move down, impulsive move up. This is corrective. You know, this is a, if it can, if, especially if it's clear above here, it'd be very bullish. This thing could start to take off. Looks like it's moving to a buy signal today, but I'd wait for it to break out. And, and I'd wait for market conditions to get a little bit better as well, just to give you a little bit of extra confirmation. And, and keep in mind that even if you got in a little bit later, you know, if this thing moved up and then the market finally got above that, that January 10th low and things looked a lot more bullish, the probability of the markets going higher is much greater at that point, which means, you know, this still has a long way it could go continue to move up if it is reversing trends. So there's still a lot of money to be made. It's just that now you have a higher probability of making that money. And so um, it's important not to get so greedy that you, that you ignore, because sometimes we want to get in, you know, we don't want to, we, we're afraid, more afraid of missing out on the gains than we are, increasing the probability that we'll get those gains and and um, that's always a trick of new traders is learning how to be patient and because uh, because I could I could I could definitely talk myself into getting in right now and say oh the market's not gonna go really low I know them you might even have an opinion that that there's no way that Russia is gonna invade Ukraine so that's that's just all of a smoke screen and and so I'm just gonna get in anyway and you might be right but um, from a probability standpoint, you're not. Um, it, it's not a high probability entry point into trades right now. And if the opposite happens, remember, stocks fall a lot faster than they rise. And so there's always that potential that you could lose a lot more money if you're wrong than you would gain if you're right. Um, and so it's, I think it's even more important when you're getting into bullish trades that you, that you really are, are confident of the bullish market conditions. Uh, uh, because if you load up in uncertain market conditions and it drops sharply, you can wipe out half your portfolio overnight or within a few days because stocks fall a lot faster than they rise. So it, it really is critical that you, you pay attention to these things I talk about in class. And, and when you're in more of those stable market conditions, you can still get pullback days, but they're usually not massive and they usually don't hurt you as bad. But boy, if you're if you're getting aggressive and there's a chance for a big sell off um, and you can get hammered. So, I, again, I emphasize how important it is to kind of wait for those those bullish conditions to, to kind of get back in place. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you when we we're in one of these updates, I'll let you know when I see it. And um, so if you are wanting to be a little more patient, you know, wait till I, I kind of give the, the green light to, to start becoming more aggressive. Again, why did I go over so many stocks then? Well, you know, there might be a stock that you 
you know, maybe you're, you don't have anything right now and you want to get to something and you're not looking to be overly aggressive, but you want to start nibbling a little bit. Um, you know, these are ones that you can start looking at. Like I said, more importantly, getting them in your watch list where when things do improve, you're ready to go. You've got stocks that, that have good patterns that you're ready to jump on. Okay. Uh, real quickly, uh, let's look at the portfolio. Um, again, we're, we're in all, all oil stocks. Um, uh, Marathon had a good earnings report. Looks like it's, it's up uh, pretty nicely today. Halliburton is kind of a pause today, but it was, it's been up the last couple of days. Devon's up again today. Murphy is is just kind of right there. All these you know, should explode when if, if that invasion takes place. But that's about it. So hopefully this was helpful for you. Like I said, next week we'll be back on the regular schedule, and um, and hopefully there'll be a lot more going on that we can we can act on. But have a great weekend, everyone. We'll see you uh, next Tuesday for the next market update. Bye now.